What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Game Show. My name is AJ Gels. How y'all doing? It's time once more for the weekly show. Oh my god! It, I, I've I've been sitting here for three hours trying to get this uh, trying to get this show recorded, and it's it's just been one fucking thing after another. I I've been ha- I was having technical issues with my mic. It took me a little bit to figure that out, and then I I, I keep. I keep getting about 30 minutes into this topic and then starting over because I, I feel like I keep getting into the weeds and I keep getting so distracted or whatever. So I'm going to I'm gonna do my best to try and keep on fucking point here. Um, as always, links and timestamps and all that stuff in the description. Let's hop on. Let's just hop into this first topic. And uh, it, it's going to be pricing, next-gen consoles and everything. Uh, but the, fir- the first article... It's about this rumored Xbox Lockhart. Uh, this is could PS5's price be a problem against the Xbox's rumored Lockhart article, Sammy Barker, Push Square. Um, I I don't think so. Look, it, it, because it, generally the crux of the article, it's PlayStation's going to be at at five hundred, Xbox One X, uh, the Xbox Series X. God damn it, Xbox just Xbox One, Xbox Two, Three, Four. Name your console something that doesn't make my fucking brain hurt. Either way, um, let's be honest, PS5 is probably going to hit 500, and despite what some people are going to say, looking at the next article, I think the Xbox is also going to hit 500. I do not think they undercut PlayStation with the main unit, but apparently Xbox is rumored to be making a less powerful version that'll play at about 1080. We'll read a little bit more in the article. Um, I think the article also says it's rumored to be uh, as low as $300, um, when the when this console comes out, so my my big question one is is this console going to be available at launch? And if so, I think this is a, I think it's a bad idea. I, I really do. I, I think a, I think a less powerful next gen console releasing at the same time as your mainline Xbox Series X is a bad move. I really do, especially because I because I think the article says that they're going to be calling it the Xbox Series S. Um, Honestly, my 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 big reason why I it, well one I think because those names are too fucking similar. It's really the Series X and the Series S, and just really, for the love of God, um, I just I don't like the naming of their next gen console. It's just, it's too long. It's too wordy. PlayStation Five, PS Five. That's, that's all you need. It's the easiest thing for PlayStation. Xbox. Why you got to be fucking weird? Um, sorry. On, on back to what I was trying to get at. I could see this being an issue for for brick and mortar retailers. I could see this being a production issue. Uh, generally, that I feel like it's always good to give your consumers options. Like I think was what Xbox is trying to do. That's their 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 theory. We're going to give them, especially in the the kind of economic times that we're in right now, we're going to give them. A, and the article is going to bring this up, and I get it. That's the one reason why I can understand this. But they're going to try and create a more cost-effective version that can play next-gen hard, that can play next-gen games at 1080 and everything, um, and all that. I, I understand that, but I think this is going to cause a production issue, and in, in basically not even uh, oh, it's going to be hard to produce both consoles. No, it's just how much of each do you actually make? I mean, that's a big question, and I'm sure they're you know. I, I'm sure there are going to be people who are going to tell me, "Oh, Xbox has got this figured out and everything." And I and I, 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 I sometimes question that with some decisions Xbox has made. I, I still wonder. I'm like, do they have this exactly figured out, or are they thinking, "Oh, people are going to love the Series X. They're going to love the Lockhart. The Lockhart." This article mentions the Lockhart's going to be like a, uh, um, an entry level console that eventually people will 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 upgrade into the next uh, the next version or whatever. It. it I well one I, I I don't think that's going to be as many people as as Xbox would think, but two. Either way, it's it's going to cause production issues. Let's I'm I'm gonna I'm, like I said I'm gonna do my best. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna stray away from my main point here. Production issues. How many of each do you make? Because I mean you have an issue of sending it to retailers. It, it, what's going to be sitting around in a warehouse waiting to resupply those retailers? Because retailers are going to need twice the space to house Xbox products now as opposed to PlayStation products. Because PlayStation's got one console. Xbox has two consoles. And especially if this is, if the Series S launches is at launch alongside the Xbox Series X, they're going to have to 
market both of them. They're going to have to keep them side by side. They're probably going to look really similar. They both have similar, just really similar names. And they're going to see the price concepts. People are going to start asking questions like, wait, what, how exactly are these different? And I think at some point people are just going to see it and just, I, I, I think a lot of people are just going to snap by the less expensive model one. So you're losing, you're losing money there because you've, you produced Xbox Series X's that are just going to sit around in storage because you have divided how people are, how many people are going to buy which platform. And especially if they're going to buy more of the less expensive unit, you're going to be making less money while still producing the more expensive model, which I'm going to guess has to be more expensive to actually produce. And then it's like I said, you, you're then going to keep producing them to refill supply. But if they aren't selling at different retailers, well then, because the other one's selling more, well then now you just have stock sitting around that's just waiting while one is being sold. It, it, I, I think it, it causes a logistical issue. And yes, I am speaking more from a, the idea of a brick and mortar retail perspective, but even online retailers still have to have a place where they keep stock to ship to people. It's still going to be a problem. It, it, it just, I think it causes more confusion, especially with the similar names. I look at it as what's a, what, what's it going to be like for a parent buying uh, a, a console for the kid? You know, they, they know the one, they want the new Xbox, but which new Xbox, especially for a parent? Look, my parents did that for me when I was a kid. It's how it is. I, I you know... I, I, I understand, I understand the hair pain. Um, you know, as somebody who's not involved in the industry goes in. So, well, you know, they want the new Xbox. Well, well, which new Xbox do we get the series S? Do we get the series X? I don't know. Well, we could get them the super powerful one or, well, our kids just going to use it to, you know, play normal stuff. So then they're going to buy the less expensive one. So as, as again, especially given the economic standpoint right now, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at this stuff being sold for Christmas, you know, for a more uh, casual audience, they're going to buy the less expensive one and Xbox is going to lose out on a sale of their true blue next gen console. I, I just, I, I don't think this, I think this could really hurt. I think this could hurt Xbox at launch more than people are thinking it's going to save them. Like I said, I think so many people are focused on the price as opposed to, like I said, a lot of the logistical issues that this is going to cause or could cause, I, I guess it's, I should say it's more speculation at this point. Um, I mean, that's, that's my biggest thing. I, I just, I, again, I think it's a logistical issue either way. Let's, let's get actually get into this article now. Sorry. I, I, I had so much, I, I didn't want to be kind of like going through like an extended rant. I thought it would be better just to get it off at the beginning. So uh, article, Sammy Barker, this is on push square feedback on enthusiast forums is that Microsoft is, uh, fresh is refreshingly open about its next gen plans. I've given my thoughts on that a lot of times. Again, I'll, I'll, I'll let that, that let that go. Uh, but rumors suggest that Xbox Series X may only represent half of its strategy for the generation to come. Apparently, the Redmond giant intends to introduce a smaller, cheaper alternative to its 12 teraflop beast, and it could put the PS5 in a precarious position. Xbox Series S, or Lockhart, as it's apparently codenamed, is said to be a 4 teraflop entry-level device designed to play next-gen titles at around 1080p. The emergence of teraflops as a point of comparison has confused many more casual gamers. Well, especially because teraflops aren't aren't apparently the end-all, be-all. Again, if you listen to, to, uh, to Cerny uh, during that whole PlayStation thing, what, what was that back in February? You know, where he's like, well, yeah, it's going to be less powerful or in terms of teraflops, but it's not exactly the the one-to-one -one comparison with teraflops and blah, 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 all the Mark Cerny talk. So, yeah, teraflops are fucking confusing in a way. Uh, so it's worth pointing out uh, that the unannounced console would be a more power would be more powerful than the PS4 Pro, or the Xbox One X, despite it having less teraflops. Uh, this is because it'll purportedly utilize some next gen features such as ray tracing, SSD hard drive. The idea is, uh, as we understand it, is to offer the Xbox Series X experience at a price point more palatable for average consumers. And the coronavirus pandemic likely to lead to a global recession. Uh, it could be a serious thorn in the PlayStation 5's plans. And again, I understand that. I, that, like I've been saying, I, that is the one thing I, 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 I like this for is is for our current economic situation. And I understand it's more palatable for average consumers. I still, like I said, my 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 issue comes in with production costs and stocking costs and everything with retailers. It just, I it, to me, it seems like you had this idea to make something more palatable to the consumers 
but I just I think it's going to cause a logistical nightmare. I I really do. I don't know. I mean, obviously we're going to have to wait for the dust to clear and see what happens. But I still think that producing two consoles with very similar names at the different price points and everything that are going to sit next to each other in store shelves is going to cause confusion. I think it's going to, like I said, cause issues in production. It just I don't think it's a good idea. I stand by it. Uh, Sony, as far as we understand, is planning a single model of, uh, of its next-gen system. Yeah, they'll pr they'll probably be a halfway, you know, like a like a like a halfway point. And look, and if the Series S is a uh, is the is like the mid-generation console, and and not even at launch, I still think that's a weird decision. So so your mid-generation console is a is a less powerful version of your mainstay console that's been on the market. That, that makes even less sense for me. I, yeah, I, I, I don't I don't get that. I mean, I guess you could argue that PlayStation sort of did that with the PS5 Slim, but even then, the PS5 Slim, as far as I was able to understand, was just a slim version of the PS5. It's kind of like what they did with the PS2. They made the slim PS2 over the, the big fat one. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think... I Yeah, it just, just releasing a weak, a weaker version from your original console as a mid-generation console is just it's weird you know uh let's see here uh the device will likely find itself sandwiched uh, somewhere between the xbox series x and the series s in terms of price although we wouldn't be surprised if it costs the same much uh the same as x my, uh, words so i wouldn't be surprised if it cost the same as microsoft's flagship they're talking about the playstation in comparison to what the series x and the series s is again i think series x and the series x not the Series S, like I said, fucking names, too similar in my opinion. Um, I think the Series X and the PS5 are both going to hit the same price point, 500 I still think that. Uh, estimates peg both devices at around 499 with the Xbox Series S could go as low as $299. Microsoft has invested a lot in scaling technology, making development efficient across models, while uh, existence of a lower-powered Xbox Series X may uh, seem problematic at first blush. It's worth remembering that developers have spent half this generation developing for both PS4 and PS4 Pro, and it hasn't really provided a problem with them. See, I don't even have an issue on that end. I'm sure I, I have less of an issue in terms of development. I have more of an issue again just in terms of producing these consoles. I'm I'm serious. You're going to have consoles just sitting around in retailers that you have produced and are never going to see a return on because of this. That is what I'm saying. Like yes, PlayStation's going to have that same issue, but eventually they might they will sell with the Series X and the Series S and all in this whole fucking thing. You're going to have you, you. Those people have already bought in. They have their next gen Xbox, unless they're going to come in a few years later and buy another Series X. You, ju I'm I'm trying to think of a better way to explain this because I still don't think I, I have this the best way. When you buy a play, when you buy a PlayStation, you're buying from the same pool. The number is going to keep going down. I mean, yes, it's going to be refilled by restocking, but you get what I'm saying. It's you're buying from the same pool. With the with the Xbox, and again, this is if this is at launch, but everything that the way they're talking about this is that it makes it seem like the Series X and the Series S are going to be available at launch. That so I'm I'm going under that assumption right now. But with this one, you're technically buying the, a similar product from two different pools. So as one goes down, one might stay the same, or you know they both might. Because I, I don't think we're going to see a situation where they both go down evenly. You know they both go down equally, and even if they do, you still have produced more consoles than you needed. You you're going to have so much just sitting around, waiting to be sold because you've. Uh, I'm I'm trying to think. The, a lot of people have said have said this about um, why you don't see games on Xbox selling as well as on PlayStation because a lot of games on Xbox are also sold on on uh, PC. You almost have to combine those numbers in a weird way. Uh, I'm I'm speaking for Microsoft exclusives compared to Sony exclusives because people buy Microsoft exclusives on PC as well as Xbox. You, you're kind of dividing your focus. That's that's what I'm trying to say from a, from a production and and a retail standpoint. That's what you're doing with the Series X and the Series S. You're dividing your focus. You're producing all of these consoles that are actually going to sell at at slower rates because they have two options. While well, PlayStation is probably going to sell at a faster rate because they only have one. You know, they don't have to produce all these extra consoles that are just going to sit and maybe be sold, maybe not. 
It's a whole thing. I, I still, it like I said, the lower price point is neat, but I see logistical issues. Um, let's see, the jump from Xbox One S to a Series S, whatever, will be significant then. I have to justify the box's existence. Uh, while it won't be anywhere near as capable as the PS5 or the Xbox Series X, the lower price point could prove extremely attractive in a cash trap economy. It's worth remembering, after all, the less powerful PS4 is much more popular than the supercharged PS4 Pro. Well, that's that's true, except the PS4 Pro was more, uh, was well, one, the, the PS4 Pro was a mid-generation console. The PS4 Pro would have been bought by, you know, more more hardcore gamers who care more about the technology. It's not been out as long as the original PS4, although I'm going to guess that for that sentence, they're comparing numbers of sales after the PS4 Pro has come out. Um, and most people don't upgrade. Most people say, well, my PS4 still works. I'm going to keep playing it. Or most people who buy in now, they see the PS... They buy for $100 less... They'll they'll just buy a PS4 because it's hundred dollars less. Again, the, it, yes, the average your your average non hardcore consumer probably will favor the less expensive unit. Again, the issue is you still have to produce those. You you have to produce and keep those stronger ones in stock in the event they will sell them. In either way, and if they're just sitting on the shelf, sitting in a warehouse and being produced, you're losing money on them. That's what I'm saying. Yes, I understand what they're talking about here, but I don't. But I don't think I think this is comparing apples to oranges when you're when you're looking at a mid generation console. When you're looking at the launch console and the mid generation console between uh, that that's that's one thing. And then you're going to look at a situation like this, which will which again I'm I'm under the impression that this is at launch two consoles coming out at the same time that there, there's a difference there. It's not the same situation. Uh, let's see here. Uh, pair this with Xbox game pass uh, an aggressive subscription, which will include access to all first party launch titles from the outset. Uh, and Sony's more traditional play uh, may look overpriced and antiquated in comparison. I still disagree. The Japanese giant uh, could find itself sandwiched between a more affordable Xbox series S and a more powerful Xbox series X uh, with a software roster that needs to be purchased at full price. Of course, Microsoft strategy could also backfire. Thank you. If it can't effectively communicate the difference between its multiple models and with the PS4, uh, likely to receive cross-gen games for several years to come. Sony may still be able to dominate the low end of the market with its existing system. A price drop is heavily rumored after all. But uh, these are new challenges that the manufacturer may have to overcome. Exactly when Microsoft will announce Xbox Series S uh, remains unclear. The industry seems certain that it exists, but the Redmond firm can uh, appears reluctant to talk about it right now. And um, All should be clear within the next few weeks, and communication is going to be imperative for both organizations at this crucial stage right it's it's they're reluctant to talk about it because they because again i don't think they want to freaking confuse people right now i mean again my whole thing is i've looked at i've looked at xbox game pass and i've wondered what the fuck is it because is, is it like is it like playstation what is playstation now my, my only issue with the playstation sp subscription services are excited they'll just I I I, what, I, I, th I think it's PlayStation Now or whatever. It's that stream, you know, you like you can like rent slash stream games digitally. Okay, I get that. PlayStation View is like movies and TV and shit. And then I have my PlayStation Plus. Like I, I understand what they each do. With the Game Pass, I'm not sure what it is. Like, do I? Uh, will you have access to the game? Okay, so is it like EA, so is it like the EA access? Do I do do I own them? Do I not own them? Do I? How is it different, or, or why would I have that? Like, should I get that instead of having my Xbox Gold account? Do I need both? Like, exactly how the fuck does it work? Because I can't find that anywhere. It just it it seems a little overly complicated in my opinion. Game Pass, but I I know there are people who have it and like it. It's it's a whole thing. Um, but no, again, it's like I said. I I think that this will cause logistical issues. I I that is that is the big crux of my why I'm against this from for Xboxes uh, from. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm I'm my brain again. I'm tr I'm doing my best here to to stay on topic and, and cover one t one thing at a time. Because I because I know I can I can tend to dance around topics and kind of go off on tangents. I'm 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 trying to and this is kind of a complicated thing here because I, I I can totally see a situation in which I'm completely wrong here. But I'm trying to make 
my point of view understandable, at least to people who would disagree with me, if that makes sense. It, 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 and I understand for people who like, I understand the point of view where people would like would like this and think it's going to be a good idea. This is one of those that we're only speculating until this comes out and we, say, we, we get more information. We will not know. But again, I'm trying to, to, to make it clear why I just, I don't see this working. It's like I said, I think it's going to be confusing. I think having to produce these consoles that may just sit around is a bit, is going to be a big problem. And again, that's not me saying, oh, PlayStation is going to sell so much more than Xbox that they're not even going to sell. No, you're technically creating competition within your own brand. It, that's that's what I'm saying because the, the Series S and the Series X, in a way, are competing against each other. Yes, PlayStation is competing against Xbox, but Xbox is competing against PlayStation and itself in this situation. I think that's the best way to put it. Either way, let's 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 move on. All right, we got another uh, Sammy Barker article. Also, of Push Square PS5's price could be undercut by Xbox Series X. Analyst suggests speaking as part of a live episode of Joff Keeley's bonus round this week. Uh, Wedbush Securities, yeah, analyst uh, Michael Pachter, Pachter, yeah, suggested that Microsoft may undercut the uh, the price of the PlayStation Five this holiday, according to the industry analyst. He thinks Sony will charge five hundred dollars for its next gen console, given its Redmond competitor, or yeah, competitor. The opportunity to uh, take a big loss and charge consumers less for the Xbox Series X. And I quote, Microsoft has a big balance sheet, he pointed out. If they want to cut the price by $100 and uh, subsidize the first uh, $10 million, they will. So I think they're waiting uh, to have Sony blink first, then they'll reveal the price uh, and launch date. It's going to be holiday 2020, so very likely in November and very likely $400, end quote. Peter Moore, uh, who's a former Xbox and EA executive, uh, but the current boss of Liverpool FC, agreed. Uh, and I quote, both companies are considering how much we can afford to lose in the first 12 to, eight, uh, 12 to 18 months and how that is offset by software attach rate and service revenue uh, for the perspective of each company. Microsoft right now, the stock price and market cap is flying for them. Uh, does boss Satya Nadella say this is our opportunity? Let's dare Sony to come in at 500 and quote uh, with its Game Pass service. That's a good chance uh, that Xbox will already have a big plus over PlayStation as all the system's first party launch titles, including the upcoming Halo Infinite will be available as part of its subscription. It also technically has the more powerful hardware in terms of teraflops, although there is there are advantages to the PS5 and other areas such as the speed of its SSD. Uh, nevertheless, uh, this could prove a real headache for Sony, especially uh, if rumors of a cheaper alternative Xbox series. We already went into all that. Um, I'm trying. I'm trying to think. Look, if this is true and Xbox does undercut and go to that 400, yeah, I, I think that gives them a massive advantage. Look what happened to PlayStation and Xbox last generation. Yeah, I, I think that's a big point. I really do, especially before all these big games that we know that, look, we know are coming to PS5. Again, a sequel to Horizon, sequel to God of War, sequel to Spider-Man, ba ba da ba da ba da You know, I can, I can keep listing them off. Um, I, I just I just like those big ones. Um, we know those are coming to PlayStation, but they're not going to be at launch. I'll, 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 gi I'll give you that. I'll give them this. If Xbox does decide to just eat the cost... Come in at 400 and do that. I think at that point, Sony also needs to just eat the cost coming at 400. I mean, oh, uh, I mean, again, it's it's one of those. Oh, is, it, PlayStation's gonna come out and they're they're gonna come out and say 500 dollars, and Xbox is gonna undercut them. Like, okay, it, it, which again makes me sit here and go, you're acting like once they come out and say the cost, it's set in stone at that point because guess what? It still hasn't been launched. Although I guess it does affect. Well, no, because again, we're we're announcing it now. It's these. Thing you still haven't shipped to retailers. It, 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 again, I I think we're we're still at a point where they can announce something and change it. I I don't think um it, which yes will cause confusion, but I'd rather cause confusion and match price as opposed to um I I'd ra I'd ra I'd rather announce it and match price and cause confusion than. Go, God damn it! Well, it looks like we're stuck. We're locked in at five hundred. You know, I, I just, I, I don't see Xbox just saying, "Screw it, we're gonna, we're gonna undercut them by a hundred bucks," and Sony not retaliating. I think, I think Sony's got again. I keep saying, I think Sony has the software, the development teams, everything. I, I think that they have. 
I, 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 I'm, try, I'm trying to think of a good way to put this. With how big their install base is, how many people you know bought into the PS4, you know how just how widely that that console spread. I think that they have a good chance at people really wanting to buy in for the next gen of the PS5. I think they have the they they have the games, or at least like I said, the games that we know are going to be coming. I think that they have. I think they have the lineup. I think they have the, the exclusives. I think they have the development team to eat the con- eat the loss on the console. Because I think, because again, I act like well, Xbox is in such a great position that they can they can do it. I think PlayStation could too. I really do. And I say this as somebody who doesn't know like the stock price and everything of of Sony and PlayStation and everything. But I I, I I'm I'm willing to bet you that that if Xbox cuts that hundred dollars, Sony's going to be right behind them. Yeah, it is kind of like a game of chicken trying to see who's going to name it first. But I still think both are going to hit the same price. I think the Series X and the PS5 are going to come out at launch. Same price. I still think that. Still on PlayStation news, but you know what? We're 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 done talking price and everything. It, again, it, it it's such a hard thing to talk about. Like I, I love talking the price of the next gen consoles and all this stuff, but at the same time, I can understand where a lower price is good, but I don't think that's all of it. It's it's a it's a weird it, it's it, it's it's a weird topic to talk about because I think that there's I how to put it. We're all kind of just guessing at this point in time. It's a it's a it's a weird fucking thing. Either way, uh, rumor PS5 reveal events on course for early to mid June. Article Liam Croft. Look, this has been a big fucking question. Look, we've been we've been hearing these these rumors since what fucking February, hell probably January, for what we're for what we're going to see the PS5 and everything. Or when we're finally going to see the PS5 and and everything, um, so you know, take this for what you will. But um, it's coming from coming from a good source. Jason Schreier's very often correct. So who knows? Um, let's see here. Uh, when will Sony reveal the PlayStation 5 and its lineup for both the first and third party games? Uh, this is the question that's on everyone's mind right now. Recent rumors have pointed towards something happening at the end of this month or an event just after uh, afterwards at the end days of June with Games Beat Jeffrey Grubb most notably stating that the date of 4th of June. Uh, now soon to be Bloomberg reporter, Jason Trier has thrown uh, his own hat into the ring of speculation. In a new interview with uh, Press Start, Trier is asked whether or not there is a uh, any credibility to the rumors in question. He responds by saying, quote, As far as I know right now, Sony is still on track to do at least one thing by the uh, by early June, let's say, or by mid-June, let's say, end quote. He then stresses uh, that these plans could still uh, change as the coronavirus pandemic continues uh, to put the world in a state of certainty at least for now however it appears we are roughly one month away from sony revealing its hand uh the japanese giant is heavily rumored to have a demon souls remake to go alongside a section console at launch uh while the likes of horizon zero dawn 2 could follow soon after sequels to god of war marvel spider-man are also pretty much inevitable uh can you wait until june blah 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 uh there is also an update here uh, Schreier has added a little more clarification to his comments on Reset Era Forum. I said there will be a, something PS5 related happening by mid-June, unless it's bumped by COVID-19. I didn't say the PS5 event because I don't know how many things they're doing. Uh, make it that what you will. Um, it wouldn't surprise me if they focus more on the games at this point because, again, I, they've just not been... I, I think to their detriment... They haven't been talking about the PS5, so I think if everything that we've been seeing is anything to go by, PlayStation is going to show games before console. I guess in a way that works, because, I mean, I, I again, I've, I've talked to people recently who agree. They think this generation is going to be... Look, we can talk price, we can talk Xbox Game Pass, we can talk all this stuff. This generation is going to be decided by games. And we in in uh, people I've talked to think PlayStation has the advantage there. That's I, I I think it comes down to that. So I think PlayStation might just lead with games in mid June. It's entirely possible, but it's entirely possible that they show the console. I don't know at this point with PlayStation. Um, hey, tell me what you think. Do you do you think it's going to be uh, a you know game lineup or is it going to be actual reveal of the PlayStation? I think they should reveal the PlayStation. It's just gotten to the point where we need to freaking see it, but. At the same time, I, I could see them only talking games. 
All right, moving on to an article on Eurogamer. Microsoft admits we set some wrong expectations with the Xbox Series X gameplay reveal. Yeah, gameplay in quotes. I think that's about right. Uh, article Wesley Yinpool, uh, as I said, Eurogamer. Microsoft has reported, uh, or excuse me, Microsoft has responded to criticism of this week's Xbox Series X gameplay reveal, admitting it had set the wrong expectation for fans. The company had teased Xbox Series X gameplay for uh, the special Inside Xbox show, but gameplay was in short supply as Microsoft issued a raft of trailers from third-party publishers and developers. Thank you. I'm glad somebody else noticed that. <laughs> Microsoft's Inside Xbox video has uh, 33,000 dislikes on YouTube, and the comments are packed with complaints, with many saying they felt they felt misled. Yeah. Uh, other Xbox Series X gameplay reveals uh, on Microsoft's Xbox YouTube channel have a, uh, have seen a similar reaction. See, I, I, I was saying the same thing during the events. Um, I, hell, I think at the very beginning of the thing, I actually said that... Um, it, it was it was kind of before I'd even seen the damn thing. It was weird how many people liked or the the like to dislike rate um, ratio. I think um, at the time it was like I want to say forty thousand up, thirty two thousand down. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying. I mean, like, yeah, I guess that's a you know that's an eight thousand difference. But you know, if you're looking at it percentage wise, they're it's it's, it's probably it's not what you want. But yeah, but I think the big thing was you say gameplay reveal. People are expecting gameplay. They're expecting to see in-game footage, not sizzle trailers and not not or uh, hype trailers or clips of well, they're clips of gameplay in the trailers. People are expecting to see ver like actual slight like slices of the game. Not when I, yes, I understand like technically the gameplay you're seeing in the trailers is a vertical slice, but they're expecting to see a fucking chunk of gameplay. You know, have have the developers sit there, have them talk about the gameplay we're seeing. You know, kind of give us like a, like like the little two minute E3 demos that we used to see before Xbox. Before, well, I I don't want to blame Xbox. I just think they were the biggest. Uh, I think they were the biggest uh, biggest um, <sighs> culprits of this when it came to E3. Um, that that they would just come out and just show trailers. You know that that that's what a lot of the Xbox shows have been. The last two or three years of E3, um, while Sony, yeah, got a little trailer heavy. They still showed gameplay. You know, they they still showed us gameplay and stuff. Um, but it, yeah, kind of it it had started making its way into trailers, and that that that's its own thing. My own issue with E3, but but that, but yeah, I mean, you say it's a gameplay reveal, and then you show trailers, and um, no, you should have just Xbox Series X game reveal. I think would have been much better. Uh, then I also think that there's an issue that you really you showed third party games. You weren't showing first. You weren't showing first party lineups. You weren't showing exclusives. I mean, hell, I mean, we know Dirt's not an exclusive. I don't. The medium isn't an exclusive, from what I've been able to tell. I think the only one that I really saw was I think Scorn might be uh, maybe Chorus. That little ship flying one might also be one. Um, I think uh, what Ascend or Ascension, whatever that kind of looked like that, that twin stick shooter. That cyberpunk looking game, um, that anime looking one, I know uh, has been announced that PS5 is getting one. Um, everybody's like, oh, there's still no talk that X that that Yakuza Like a Dragon is going to come to PlayStation, but come on, it's coming to PlayStation. No way in hell it's not coming to the PlayStation. Um, I, but I mean, you just, you, I mean, hell, then you, <laughs> your big your big closer was Assassin's Creed Valhalla, really. It's not. That's not going to be an exclusive. No way in hell that's an exclusive. You didn't show anything. It just, yeah. It, like I said, I mean, I, I, I think, who, whoever came up with the name or for how they were selling it, yeah, you. Oh, that was that was a really bad move. It was. And you know, oddly enough, going back to an earlier earlier topic, you know, when I'm saying I think that this whole creating two consoles is going to kind of cause a. A production issue. It's going to cause logistical issues. I'm sure there are going to be people saying, "Oh, well, there are people with an Xbox. They're they're going to be they're going to be figuring all that stuff out." Okay, they were they're going to be figuring that stuff out, but they couldn't figure out that calling. The, the, but their marketing team couldn't figure. And I get it. That's two different things. You know, marketing team and people in charge of production a little different. But still, you're telling me their marketing team couldn't look at this event. They could. They they planned it all out. They gave the okay. They went live. Also, I, I what Imran Khan on Twitter was saying, you, you, you get them some good microphones too. I think I thought that was pretty funny, but 
they plan this out. And <laughs> they, 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 they looked at this plan and nobody went, um, question, why are we calling this a gameplay reveal and we're not showing gameplay? We're showing trailers. Like, maybe we should rename this. Maybe we should should advertise this a little differently. Just, just throwing that out there. Nobody within the company said that. I get it. Companies drop the ball. They make bad decisions. But God damn, really? Like that that's that was it was it was not a good move from them. Uh, and again, it's like I said, I, I throw that all in the marketing department. Um, again, it, even here, the uh, responding to a tweet uh, from uh, from a fan, general manager of Xbox Games uh, Marketing at Microsoft, Aaron Greenberg held this uh, held his hands up, and I quote: "Had we not said anything and just shown uh, May inside Xbox Show like we did last month, I suspect reactions might have been di- uh, might have been different. Clearly, we set some wrong expectations, and that's on us. We appreciate all the feedback and can assume and can assure you uh, we will take it all in and learn as a team. No, you were trying to draw eyes to you." And I get it. That's why you were saying gameplay and you were, but you may, the problem is you drew eyes to you by promising something that you weren't going to deliver. And clearly you had to know that, that that's the frustration. It's not a, it's not frustrating that in this apology to me is bullshit. This is, this is a non-apology. It's, well, we set some wrong expectations. We're sorry. It's your fault you set the wrong expectations. You knew what you had. You knew this wasn't gameplay. Or or did you just throw these trailers in there not knowing what they were going to be? Like, like that that's that's my question. I I just I I I think I think that's what irritates me the most about it. it it's and and back to what I was saying, it's why I said, you know, when people want to tell me, "Oh, they they're a big company. I'm sure they have production figured out and everything." I'm like, "Well, they're a big company. They should not have made this blunder." And yes, I get it. People make P- companies make PR mistakes all the time. But this is just so blatant. I I'm I'm almost I almost don't know what to say. I'm I'm still baffled a little bit by it. Because it's it's like I said, this goes beyond a PR mistake. This is you you blatantly sold us one thing and delivered another, which yeah happens, but yeah I don't I don't know man I, I it's just I'm I'm getting lightheaded from yelling. That or this room is just way too freaking hot. It's just it's like I said, they had to have known what they were going to show, and then they just named it something else to get people to come in, and they sold it as one other thing. It just it it really pisses me off. And and honestly, it's like I said, I I don't see this as an apology because again, it's you could have avoided it. You you really could have. If you if you would have done what exactly what he said, well, clearly it's on us that you know if we yeah it's on you. I get it. You're taking responsibility. That's not an apology. You know, you're like, well, people shouldn't have gotten their hopes up and their expectations. Like, you, you know, it, clearly we set some wrong expectation. It, it, it's just, I yeah, like I said, it, it's just I somebody should have caught this, and I can't believe nobody did. Whatever. Um, perhaps the biggest culprit was the much hyped gameplay reveal of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which they, uh, which you know what, I I think Ashraf Ismail gave a little bit better response. We'll get into that in a second. But again, but this wasn't his event either. Yeah, I get it. He, I, I honestly, from the way Ashraf was acting during that interview and the way he kind of responded to things, I don't think Ashraf wanted to do that reveal there. I think that he wanted to wait and do something with Ubisoft and just on its own. I think that's probably what he wanted to do, but you know, they wanted to get out ahead of things, do it during this big Xbox show. I, I think that's what um, he wanted, but that's just my, my feeling. But either way, a uh, big culprit was uh, Valhalla, which itself was teased by publisher Ubisoft by a trailer that went live after an elaborate Twitch stream. <laughs> that thing was all fucking weird. 
unfolded over the course of the day, that Twitch stream. I, I, I get it. People loved it. I just kept tuning in, like, you going to say anything? Is this going to be all that art? And just, that was weird. Uh, this gameplay reveal turned out to contain no gameplay at all, rather flashy in-game cinematic camera work. See, and, and something else that really irritated me, and again, go back, go back, watch, watch my coverage, uh, uh, or my, my reaction video to that, uh, to the, uh, to the Xbox thing. He's talking with uh, the 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 Xbox presenter is talking with Ashoff and he's like, oh look at all this gameplay, oh my gosh, this is so cool. This I'm like, You're, we're not looking, at, and I was saying that during that we're not looking at gameplay. All this shit could be cutscenes and cinematics. The fuck are you talking about, dude? It's like I say, I I I, mean, I don't know, man. It's like I I don't know if those presenters were trying to polish a turd or what. I just I, I don't get who signed off on that event. Sorry, I'm getting myself worked up. I'll, I'll try and hold back here. Uh, the reaction to the video has been similarly negative with thousands of dislikes and angry comments across various channels. Uh, it's been uploaded to. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not surprised. Uh, Ashraf Ismail, uh, creative director of Assassin's Creed Valhalla, took to Twitter to respond to fans. You're rightfully uh, expected to see more today. Uh, we have a long marketing campaign ahead of us. You will see in-depth gameplay and get a lot more info about the game. Uh, thank you for your excitement and passion. Be patient with us. Excuse me, and be kind. It will be worth it. I didn't see that la that last little bit. I saw that you're rightfully you rightfully expected more. Uh, we have a long marketing campaign ahead of us. You know what? I, I'm I'm I, I not because I I forgot that this part was here. I have another article that covers some more of his tweets. I'm gonna go read and see if I see what's going on here. Give me a uh, sorry. I'll finish out this article. Um. So the episode has brought to mind the question of what gameplay means when it comes to video game marketing. Based on this week's episode of Inside Xbox, the Microsoft uh, to Microsoft, this means, or perhaps from now on, meant in-game footage as opposed to showing how the game will look when it's actually being played by someone. Microsoft has promised a gameplay reveal uh, for its raft of first-party Xbox Series X games, such as Halo Infinite and new projects from Double Fine, Ninja Theory, and Obsidian in July. I suspect they will see a bit more gameplay than we saw this week. I don't fucking know. Maybe not. I mean, I, honestly, I, it wouldn't surprise me if we just see the same fucking thing. I, I, it really wouldn't surprise me. Um, oh my God. I, I just, I'm, I'm about to, I, I'm serious. I'm going to have a stroke because of this. Um, it just, cause it, it, it pisses me off that they, that they sold, that they sold it as gameplay and I'm like, well, well, we didn't know you wanted to see gameplay trailers with in game, with in game shit. It just. Oh man, that's just gross. Yeah, I just, I'm 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 just gonna move on. I I decided to cut out uh, the Games Radar article that uh, I was gonna read next, just because really it just recovers that uh, Ashaf tweet that I, uh, I I just I guess I forgot was part of that Eurogamer article. Um, honestly, reading that Ashaf tweet again, I was saying I was willing to give him a pass because it seemed like he really didn't want to do that Xbox event, or at least. <sighs> I don't know. There was he just seemed off during the event. But reading the tweet, I, I guess it, again it was kind of like the Xbox thing. I think everybody there is just like, well, we understand that you're that you're you're upset, and we 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 think it's warranted and everything. I'm like, well, then why again? My answer is, why'd you do it? Why'd you do it in the first place? You had to have known that this would have pissed people off, and you you did it anyways. I don't understand that. Whatever. Moving on. Uh, let's see here. Summer Games Fest schedule includes new game reveal uh, on Tuesday, or well, I think that's tomorrow. I think when I yeah Tuesday the twelfth. Yep, tomorrow or today. I don't know, depending on how late it is and how long this video ends up being. Eh, I don't know. Um, let's see here. Uh, as promised, Joff. Ke uh, Je God damn it, it's Jeff Keeley. I know that, and I'm still gonna always pronounce it Joff Keeley. Uh, Jeff Keeley posted uh, the initial schedule overnight for the Summer Games or yeah, the Summer Game Fest uh, initiative that will engulf gaming news uh, for the next couple of months. It all starts tomorrow with the inside Xbox third-party gameplay reveal uh, for the Xbox Series X, but we've got events spanning all the way until late August uh, to look forward to. This is only a brief glimpse of the uh, full lineup, how uh, full lineup of shows. However, it uh, has already given us uh, something new to look forward to. Uh, next week, on Tuesday the 12th um, of May, Keeley will share a new game announcement with the world, dubbed Sunrise Number 1. This appears to be just the first string of reveals that the man himself has gotten the chance to share. 
Uh, the event will come with the caption, uh, join Jeff Keeley's uh, for a surprise game reveal. Uh, oh, go on then, Jeff. Uh, so what will the game be? To be perfectly honest, we have no, uh, we have absolutely no idea. There's a long list of rumored titles, uh, blah, 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 all that stuff. Um, it, it's it, Again, it's just it's just general stuff. Uh, it'll be uh, 9 a.m. Pacific, 12 Eastern, uh, all that. Obviously, I'll, I'll do a reaction video. Uh, I'm not expecting it to be super long. Um, I think, you know, it's like Sunrise 1. I'm going to guess that these, like, Sunrise events or whatever are going to be just sort of like, I say morning because, yeah, it's 12 Eastern, but it's 9 a.m. on out in California, whatever. Um, but, you know, these are just going to be kind of like short, I'm going to guess 15, 10 to 15 minute reveals uh, where it's going to be, hey, here's a trailer, maybe some gameplay. Here's, you know, a talk, a talk with the developer of the basic idea of the game. So I, I think it's going to be shorter. It's not going to be some long drawn out events um i like the idea of it uh especially i am I'm, I'm liking summer the idea of summer games fest more and more uh now that, especially we've seen that um uh tokyo game show got canceled well at least physically tokyo game show got canceled we're gonna be seeing a uh excuse me a, a digital event similar to what everything else has been doing as far as i know jeff keely or jeff keely god damn it is still doing uh his thing with um, still doing his thing with uh, Gamescom, come August. Why? Why am I? Yeah, Gamescom's in August. Is it? God damn it! I, this this whole virus thing is just throwing my schedule off, my internal schedule off. Like I can't remember when anything is. Hell, half the time I forget what the, what day of the week it is. Uh, either way, uh, just short article telling you, hey, there's gonna be something going on tomorrow. Uh, we will be doing it. Uh, you know, we will be uh, reacting to it on the channel. So come uh, drop by. When that goes up. Moving on, it seems that EA is suggesting that PS5 may have an answer to this whole smart delivery thing that Xbox is um, that Xbox is really trying to push. I, I've said this. I think I think there's one good thing that came out of the uh, that Xbox sort of event. I think it was the push for uh, their their emphasis on their smart delivery system. I, I think that is going to be that is a very good um sticking point for that console or, or sticking points not right i think that's a very good selling point there we go uh once more this article steven tell be uh push square uh naturally there's there words naturally there's a lot of talk around next gen right now but one question in particular remains a bit of a mystery particularly for ps5 if you buy a game on ps4 that later releases on ps5 can you swap to the enhanced version at no extra cost interestingly electronic arts now appears to be in favor of such an initiative speaking during an earnings call with investors ea's a cfo blake Jor Jor Jorgens. i'm going with Jorgensen. um comments directly on the matter quote note that this year uh the phasing includes uh, the effect of revenue rec oh my god i'm gonna fall asleep here revenue uh, recognition from the gamer uh, from the games we are launching for the current generation of consoles that can also be upgraded for free for the next generation end quote he said holy crap uh this sounds like uh like certain ps4 games from uh, the publisher are getting uh, souped up versions for ps5 and players will be able to swap these uh for next gen ports for free apex legends is likely getting a ps5 treatment so it stands to reason other ea titles will be making the jump as well while this sounds pretty good uh there's a possibility Jorgensen is merely referring to ps5's backwards compatibility sony has said the overwhelming majority of ps4 uh ps4's back catalog will function on ps5 could ea simply be saying your ps4 games will work on the next gen console with no extra purchase necessary we think it's probably more uh more than that though the executive's wording suggests he's talking about swapping your ps4 games for fancy new ps5 versions given other publishers are saying similar things microsoft has been um touting its smart delivery program we think this is pretty clear so certain ea games should uh, be upgradable to ps5 for free whatever um uh, apparently, I, I've just lost my ability to read, but this does pose an interesting uh, an, an interesting question. I mean, is this just going to be an EA thing? I mean, they mentioned that other developers are talking about the same thing, so I don't know. Maybe I hope I have hope that PlayStation is uh, hasn't really been talking about it, but is trying to match Microsoft's smart delivery in a way. Uh, I think I think it's an interesting idea. Um, not sure. I, I, it's, it's one of those things that I'm not sitting here going, oh, they're doing it, or I'm very much expecting them to do it. But at the same time, I it, it's an interesting thought, and I'm, I'm curious to see if Sony is going to end up um, kind of following 
um, if they're going to end up following Microsoft uh, with that whole smart delivery thing. God damn, I love the the image they chose was for Anthem. <laughs> it's funny to me. Sticking with some EA news, Mass Effect Trilogy HD remaster is finally happening, apparently. Article Robert Ramsey of Push Square. I, I think I retweeted this on on uh, on Twitter. I'm trying to remember what I, what I said. Oh, yeah, it was, it's happening. Oh, my God. I, just, how long have we been sitting here yelling, man, just remaster the Mass Effect Trilogy? God damn, Ashley was hot in the third game. Sorry. <laughs> But God damn it, I have been waiting for this trilogy to be remastered for such a long freaking time. Um, I mean, we, we've been hearing rumors that, because what, isn't, e I think EA, they said something along the lines of they're working on a few, um, a few projects. Um, we knew, I'm trying, I'm trying to remember exactly what the rumors were, if it was Bioware related or EA related. I believe it was EA related. I think, uh, especially talking about the EA play um, coming out, uh, coming next month. I think people were, they, they heard that there was a Mass Effect project that was going to be announced. And so many people were thinking, ooh, is it going to be this new supposed Mass Effect project they're working on? And I'm, and I'm sitting here going, there's no way in hell they show that before they show the next Dragon Age. If they're going to show a Mass Effect project, it's got to be a remaster. And thank God we're finally, it, it looks like we're getting a little bit more... Um, a little bit more confirmation. It looks like it. It's it, it, like it's going to happen. Uh, last night we covered EA's financial report for 2020, uh, pointing out that it has a number of unannounced games currently in development. All of them set to release by April 2021, alongside four EA partner titles. Uh, there was also mention of an EA HD title, in other words, a remake or remaster. Given that fans have been waiting almost an entire console generation for a remastered Mass Effect trilogy, we wrote about how this report offers some hope, but as it happens, we might not even need hope. A re-release of the Mass Effect trilogy is apparently uh, heading our way. This is according to VentureBeat, who write, quote, Oh, and that uh, HD remaster of an EA game is the Mass Effect trilogy. Uh, end quote. What, just like that? Cheeky. So, yeah, it looks like it's finally happening, and it's about damn time. Hopefully, we'll learn uh, a lot more over the coming weeks as EA Play 2020 is scheduled. Yep, scheduled for June. I for some, June, July, I always get those two months flipped around when it comes to announcements. It's always like, I know it's a J something, but um, honestly, I'm stoked. Um, I, I really do... Um, I, I really do hope that this remaster is real, that we aren't reading something into it. Because, again, this hasn't been officially announced. Um, I'd say I think all the evidence is pointing to a Mass Effect trilogy. Again, it's like that that <laughs> one quote. It's like, oh, yeah, it's a Mass Effect game. Um, or it's a Mass Effect remaster. You know, we know that they're working on a... Re either way, just from the earnings report, we know they're working on the remaster uh, in the first place. Uh, I think this has been a highly requested game. So, yeah, I, I think it makes perfect sense that they... would remaster the Mass Effect trilogy, but god damn, I am excited about that. I have been wanting to go back and play those games for so long, and uh, hopefully we can do it sooner rather than later. On to our final article of the night. I thought we'd end on something, eh, something a little more, <coughs> excuse me, something a little bit more fun. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077's ESRB rating describes customizable genitalia possible crucifixion. I, as soon as I heard that this game is going to have customizable genitalia, I mean, look, I, I was already sold on this game. I'm like, I'm, I'm even more in. I am so excited about that. <laughs> oh my God. It, uh, CD Projekt Red, I love you so freaking much. Oh, we get to customize our junk. I'm, I'm so happy about this. Um, you know, I love that. I actually, I love this, this, this artwork because I love how the, the, future police guy they look like nilf guardian soldiers you know these these little little i'm gonna say horn looking things look like the nilf guard nilf guardian helmets from the witcher 3 uh, it's it, uh, i'm i'm not sure if that's just something that's always existed in the cyberpunk universe or whatever or if that's a cyberpunk or that's a cd project red making kind of like a nod but that's that's every time i see this guy i see a nilf guardian it's really cool to me. Um, this is actually coming by way of um, Austin Goslin of Polygon. Actually, an art, uh, the site we don't really use very much here. Or use here on the channel. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Cyberpunk 2077 won't be out until September of this year, but... Excuse me. Uh, the Entertainment Software Ratings Board, ESRB, has released a few details about what we can expect the game... Uh, from the game while we wait, the SRB has given Cyberpunk 27, uh, 2077 the mature rating for depictions uh, of blood and gore, intense violence, nudity, 
strong language, strong sexual content, and use of drugs and alcohol. The SRB also puts together a summary explaining each rating. Uh, the summary often includes details about the game, some of its missions, or the various activities and shenanigans that players can find as they play. There's shooting and blood and guns, which all checks out, but then things get more interesting. The SRB describes a mission where you, quote, assist a character by hammering nails through his hands and feet end quote, and also mentions the game includes drugs, both real and fictional, and descriptions of, or and depictions of their use. Well, I mean, the drugs isn't, isn't really surprising. I mean, you know, with this being a very uh, gang kind of focused game, it's, you know, it's, it's like having uses of drugs and alcohol not be in a, a Grand Theft Auto game. But honestly, the whole hammering the nails, the hands and feet, that sounds really cool. I, and again, I... I, I, w I was talking with somebody a couple days ago. They are actually afraid that Cyberpunk 2077 is going to come out unfinished. I don't know. Maybe it's just my my faith in, in CD Projekt, but I, I don't. I think it'll come out as a finished game for, I'm going to say for the most part, because I think the only thing that I've heard that won't necessarily be finished are going to be the, um, what was it? There, there might be some voice acting that's not in the game because some, some issues with the virus and everything that that might be fixed in a day one patch, but that's a, different animal um but no man i i i'm super curious to see what they're going to do with this like is it going to be a religious thing is it going to be like is it going to are they going to try and do like a first person torture scene kind of like what gta 5 did with trevor just kind of less satirical and comical i'm 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 really curious about that uh, let's see here. Uh, then there's the sexual content. Quote, this game contains nudity and sexual material, the ESRB states. Players can select a gender and customize their character. Customization can include depictions of breasts, buttocks, and genitalia, as well as various sizes and combinations of genitals. End quote. Cyberpunk will be releasing uh, for Google Stadia, Microsoft, uh, Windows, PS4, and Xbox One September 17th with an Xbox X One X version coming at a later date. Um, God damn it. I'm, 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 I'm very excited. See, the, the Xbox One version coming at a later date, I'm not sure. Like, is, Again, with the smart, is it just like, oh, you can play your, you can play Cyberpunk on... Xbox, I'm going to guess that if any game they're going to try and make sure, PlayStation is going to make sure it's going to be backwards compatible, it's going to be Cyberpunk, so I think that's like one of the last really big games coming out before the next-gen consoles drop. I went with, with this whole, well, there's an Xbox version coming out. I'm like, yeah, it's probably going to be a few years after. It's going to be a Game of the Year version. That's what it's going to be, in my in my opinion. But that's, that's off topic. See... I, I I'm I'm really curious. I, like I'm I'm actually sure. Like uh, like are you gonna like? Is there gonna be like sliders and everything? Like are we gonna like see us like manipulating the genitals on camera? <laughs> Dear God, I really want that to be a thing. I I really want it to be a thing. Oh my God. Well, I I think I think this might be one of the first times I ever actually show a character customization on camera just because i want to see like are we are we gonna get and just like oh yeah okay well here's my height all right customizing my weight all right here's my hair color my background oh oh okay let's take a let's take a little bit um uh, i'm gonna move this gonna add some girth gonna man a little longer <laughs> just what the fuck is happening <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I had to include this just because I'm, I'm 12 years old on the inside. This is so fucking funny to me that the, the CD Projekt would, would do something like this. But at the same time, it, it, this almost seems like this is, a, this is a move that Rockstar would make. You know, like like this would be a joke thing that they put in in, in a um, in a GTA game. But this is going to be in a, in a game out of CD Projekt. I, I fucking love this company. Um, all right, like, like I said, I, just, I, I, I wanted to add a little little fun at the end of the show. I feel like we've been really kind of serious uh, throughout this one. Um, if you can't tell, uh, my brain is getting a little fried. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. As always, social media is in the description. Like, comment, not already. Please subscribe to the channel. Hope you enjoyed the show. Uh, but until next week, my name is AJ Gales, the Something Game Channel. I'm out.